Hello there, and welcome to another video from YouTube Ireland. My name, well, I think it's more important to say what my name isn't. My name isn't Amber Hayes, and the less said about that situation, the better. We all know what happened there. Let's not open old wounds. What's more important is what I have for you today. Right, you may notice how I am kitted out with my ABBA baseball cap. That's because this video is going to be a review of ABBA's latest album, Voyage, which it's more than just the latest album. It's kind of a momentous occasion in the history of pop music because these are one of the strongest pop songwriting teams and performers ever known. And they had been off the scene for 40 long years. Um, their last studio album being The Visitors that was released in November 1981. So this is a big deal. Um, now, I'm going to give YouTube Ireland's verdict on the album and on the songs, but also what we're more interested in is what is the critics' consensus on this album? What do the experts think? And what is their ranking of these songs? Which ones do they think are good? Which ones do they think are bad? So we'll go through that. Now, obviously, you might be wondering, well, why ABBA? Why is YouTube Ireland focusing on a Swedish band? Well, the answer is obvious. Because Ireland love ABBA. We love ABBA. We probably love ABBA more than any other country in the world. And if you find that, if you think that's a little bit of hyperbole, then just look at the cold hard facts. If you look at the number one singles that ABBA has had around the world, they never had more number one singles than they had in Ireland. Um, they had 12 number one singles in Ireland. Now, if you compare that with their record in the UK, in the UK they had nine. In Ireland, uh, name of the game missed out on being number one. However, um, Summer Night City, Chikatita, Gimme Gimme Gimme, and One of Us all made number one here, but failed to make it overseas. Um, yeah, the second, I think the second country after us is the Netherlands, where they had 10 number one hits. But even in their home country, Sweden, or in Australia, which had ABBA fever, um, there's no other country where ABBA had more number ones than in Ireland. Um, so yes, Ireland has a special relationship with ABBA. So I think this video is appropriate on this channel. Okay, so moving right on. Um, if you look at the stats, for ABBA Voyage, it has been overall a roaring success commercially. Um, it's been, the album, which was released on November the 5th, has been number one in 18 countries, sold over 1 million units in its first week. It is the fastest sell selling album of this year and one of the biggest in the last four years. So yeah, it has been massively successful. Um, they got a new number one single in Sweden with Don't Shut Me Down. So yeah, it's going really well. And the Christmas song Little Things is a contender in the race for Christmas number one as well. So it's all going on for ABBA right now. Okay. So let's go to the review then. Um, what we did was we um, googled for reviews of ABBA's Voyage and we found some of the top uh, search results on Google and went through them and we found 20 reviews from some of the most respected publications in the world. So we gathered reviews from Attitude Magazine, RTE, uh, Irish Independent, Irish Times, Irish Examiner, The Guardian in the UK, uh, Sydney Morning Herald, Pitchfork, Rolling Stone magazine, uh, the UK independent newspaper, Classic Pop mag, uh, Variety, All Music, The Line of Best Fit, New Music Express, um, Clash Music, Slate, Washington Square News, The Quietus, and The Scotsman. Then, once we had those 20 reviews in, we eliminated the two outliers. So the review that was most glowing, yet seemed not to be well informed, we eliminated that one. 
and we also eliminated the review that seemed the most scathing and also seemed poorly informed. So the two that we ditched came from the Independent UK and also from the Guardian. Those two uh, just it just seemed like poor journalism. Then after we had eliminated those two outliers, we took the ten of the eighteen that were remained. We took uh, the 10 most prestigious reviews, both good and bad and middling. And from those, we we use those for our stats. Okay, so based on those reviews, we have a top 10 songs from the album Voyage. So according to the critics consensus, the worst track on the album is track three, Little Things, the Christmas song. That scored approximately 62% from the critics' consensus. Puts it in 10th place. Um, Now, I have to say, personally, I called this. I predicted exactly what the song was going to sound like in advance. A gentle piano ballad with direct Christmas references, bells, a children's choir, and that's exactly what we got. I think the melody is very distinctive and pleasant. The lyrics are fine, but very Christmassy. A little bit saccharine. Um, you wouldn't really want to be listening to the song outside of December or maybe early January. There are a few saucy lines in this, where the few things that are a bit adult, a bit interesting in a Christmas song, um, that give it a bit of an edge, like the bit, the line about um, your naughty eyes and how you might bring me a bre- breakfast tray, but there's a price. What is that price, Abba? What do you like? So, um, yeah, a little bit of edge there, which is typical for ABBA. Um, The last line sung by the kids' choir about a song that my grandma sings is an excellent closing line because it puts modern-day ABBA into context in a lovely way where they are all grandparents now. So, yeah, it is a song that someone's grandma is singing. So, yeah. Um, Okay, now some of the critics... Uh, Darren Styles from Attitude gives it 9 out of 10 and says it's a Christmas song that drips with music box simplicity. Alan Core from RTE also likes it, says it comes gift-wrapped in such a gorgeous melody. John Marr of The Independent.ie gives it only 6 out of 10 and says it's sweet sincerity and intergenerational connectedness are hard to dislike, but he's not a fan overall. He finds it twee. Irish Times liked it. They say a children's choir coats a festive glaive glaze over the Christmas ditty Little Things. Um, then one of the worst reviews is from Barry Divola from the Sydney Morning Herald who gives it 1 out of 10 and calls it a horrendously kitsch Christmas song with a nod nod wink wink element that makes you go ew. Um, so there's an example of uh, one of the bad reviews for that song. Rob Sheffield as well from Rolling Stone calls it a, ch- a stomach churning filler. So yeah, this it's got mixed reviews, but generally that was the the track on the album that was least liked by the critics. Okay, so number nine on the list is Bumblebee. Bumblebee is track eight on Voyage. It's sung by Frida. Um, it's a very sweet, very simple song with a velvety vocal from Sweda. Now she herself is a keen environmentalist, so the underlying message would certainly chime with her. It mostly celebrates the atmosphere of pottering around the garden on a lovely summer's day. Uh, the climate bits are delivered in a mild, non-preachy manner. So um, if you weren't a climate change activist, this song wouldn't necessarily annoy you. It's not very preachy. Um, it's well pitched. But for me now, this song is overly simple. There's not that much to it. And I think I, th- I also agree it's one of the weaker songs on the album. Um, In their heyday, ABBA might have shelved that particular song or else modified it a bit to meet their exacting standards of songwriting. I think um, it doesn't soar. It's a bit too basic. It's very flat. However, the critics also um, are not overly enamoured with it. Some are quite happy with it. Others think it's a bit of a filler. So Alan Core from RTE... He, he liked it. He called it a plaintive hymn to the pleasures of nature and dread at our talent for destroying it. Uh, Louise Bruton from the Irish Times also thought it was good. An emotional familiarity for songs we never heard before. She describes it as. Um, then also Ben Cardew from Pitchfork liked it and said the soaring flute opening is surely a nod to Fernando. 
Um, then on the downside, you have Barry Divola from the Sydney Morning Herald gives it 3 out of 10 and considers it a fluffy throwaway that appears to exist solely to recreate those pipes from Fernando. Um, also, Jem Aswad from Variety gave it 5 out of 10 and says, The modern lyrics and Fernando flutes make you wonder if they're kidding. Okay, so a mixed bag there for Bumblebee, and it's according to the critics' consensus, ninth. All right, so moving up, song eight is the Irish jaunt when you danced with me. So this is really excellent because you know Ireland, Abbott have had more number ones in Ireland than every other country. That's an undeniable fact. So it feels like the mention of Kilkenny in the lyrics of this song is a little acknowledgement of their Irish fans and how good Ireland have been to the band. So that's really, really gratifying at the end of their career that, that there's been a bit of an acknowledgement of the connection with Ireland. All right, so this one has a jaunty, folksy feel to it. Um, it mentions, well, I myself am from Waterford, so our neighbouring county, Kilkenny. So that's excellent. Um, and what's really great about this is, what I love about this personally, is that um, Kilkenny likes to call itself the Marble City, even though it's not technically a city, it's actually a town. So to see ABBA um, setting the action of this song in Kilkenny as somewhere that someone want, might want to leave to go to a real city like Waterford, for example, um, is quite gratifying to me. So, um, and then they come back to Kilkenny for what's called a village fair. So, um, yeah, the Marble Village, let's call it from now on. ABBA have spoken, and I cannot disagree with them. Anyhow, um, there's some decent melodic elements in this song, particularly the part where they sing, So you left for the city. <laughs> and the lyrics in the story are very simple, very effective, and they don't detract from the musicality of the song. So it's not overly wordy. Um, like one or two other al uh, songs on the album do suffer a bit from that. Okay. Um, so some of the critics really liked it. Like... Um, Darren Styles from Attitude called it a glorious Irish Cayley and gave it 9 out of 10. Alan Core from RTE gave it 10 out of 10 and said it was a rousing nod to Benny's folk music roots, exploding into juddering live life with pipes, the chirp of a mandolin and accordion. Um, John Marr from the Irish Independent, on the other hand, gave it only 5 out of 10 and said it's set to a cod Celtic arrangement. Um, a few others... Um, Nick Levine, for example, from New Music Express, called it a twee Irish folk song and would have given it 3 out of 10. Um, then you have Barry Divola from the Sydney Morning Herald liked it and said two men who could write across multiple popular music genres, crafting undeniable melodies that stuck in your head. So there's what some of the critics thought of that particular song and it's number 8 on the list. Okay, so number 7. It's track six on the album. I can be that woman. Okay. So it's positioned on the album. It's positioned after Don't Shut Me Down and Just a Notion. So after two peppy joyful ones in a row, it's time for the trademark ABBA Misery Ballad. Um, I suspect myself that the enduring popularity of The Winner Takes It All... Uh, slipping through my fingers um, the day before he came would at least be partly to blame for the existence of this song. I think they felt they needed something like this on the album, a kind of sort of dreary sort of a song that tells a story. Um, the storytelling element is there and the raw heart on sleeve emotion. You have Tammy the dog who's central to the story. She's her name is a nod to the Queen of Country and friend of the jams, Tammy Wynette. The song itself pays homage to a style of tell-all ballad that is popular in country music. But unfortunately for me, this song does meander a bit and lacks the innate catchiness that would normally define an ABBA ballad. So it does, it seems, I don't know, I think in their heyday, the melody of that would have been more important. I think, unfortunately, in this case, they prioritise the, the lyrics over the tune and it's not quite as catchy as what we would expect from them. Now, 
there was a vast amount of disagreement among the critics about this one. Some of them really loved it, and some of them had no time for it. Um, like, for example, uh, who liked it? You had Rob Sheffield from Rolling Stone calling it a lavish ballad. You had Louise Bruton from the Irish Times calling it uh, conversational and reminiscent of Chikatita. Um, other people like John Marr from Independent thought it has elements of state musical about it. Um, a sweeping ballad loaded with Strindbergian strife and inner turmoil. So there are a few different good opinions of it. Um, on the downside, um, Barry Divilla of Sydney Morning Herald describes it as a lead-footed ballad that, that uses a dog as a focus for a troubled relationship. So in general, that one scored... Uh, 70% from the critics and it's the 7th best song on the album so now we're into the top 6 and from here on in according to Rotten Tomatoes uh, these would all be certified fresh because they're all above a 75% rating from the critics so in 6th position is track 7 Keep an Eye on Dan okay this one is a bit disco-y so for all the fans who love the Vooly Voo album, and also who like songs like Gimme 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 and Summer Night City, uh, this would suit them. The unusual subject matter also has um, sparked interest from the critics because it just shows a bravery to write about things that just people haven't been writing about. So the lyrics in this have won quite a few fans. It, it's about a child of divorce and a mother's anxiety. Um, so... I'm a fan of this song myself. I think it has a great tune and a great beat. And the words, they're quite innovative, but they also crack me up as well because I have a nephew called Danny who's around the right age for this song. So keep an eye on Danny. Just picture my nephew causing trouble and my sister being anxious about him in like at a kid's party in case he does anything dodgy or in case he's nervous and introverted in himself or whatever it is but yeah so this one has personal resonance with me because of my nephew who his mother worries about a bit so yes um some of the critics we have positive reviews like for example rolling stone says instead of chasing trends they stick to the classic sound they perfected years ago um ben cardio of pitchfork says it's a gnarled around the edges electronics and a regular cowbell vaguely unpredictable yet glaringly obvious ones heard um some of the poor reviews um, oh sorry this is a good one um mm, john marr from irish independent describes it as nothing short of a pop masterpiece um other people are a fan of the beat and the fact that it's classic disco abba other critics are a fan of the innovative lyrics the people who didn't like it, here's an example, is that Barry Divilla, for example, from the Sydney Morning Herald, said it sounded like a bony M B side. He thought it was a poor track. Um, also, uh, Kieran McCaddy of Line of Best Fit, even though he wasn't a massive fan of the song, he did say it was an extremely fun track, but um, he wasn't overly enamored with it. All right, so top five. Number five is the closing track on the album, Ode to Freedom. It's good, in my opinion, that the album does not end with no doubt about it, because no doubt about it leaves us on the line, this isn't where it ends. Now, if they were going to do that, if they were going to close with the girls loudly singing, this isn't where it ends, ABBA fans would think that that meant there was another album on the way. However, we're pretty sure there's not another album on the way, so This Isn't Where It Ends is the end of track 9, and then we have track 10, Ode to Freedom, and this, I am afraid, probably is where it ends. There probably is not going to be another album, uh, album from ABBA unless the two ladies insist upon it. Benny feels they're done now. They've, they've closed that chapter. So it finishes. Th this song is a demure classical flourish to end on. It's got rich orchestration, a layered bed of harmonies that's just beautiful. It has become a big favourite among a certain demographic of the ABBA fandom. And then you have the lyrics with their implicit distrust of anyone staking a claim on what freedom means. Has won over quite a few critics as well. 
For me, this song is pleasant, but it doesn't fully deliver on its potential. It's a little flat. There's, it's like a big orchestral build that never quite gets there. I think it's, it suffers from a similar problem as Bumblebee does, in that it's just a little, um, what's the word? I think that song and Bumblebee, if uh, Benny and Bjorn had come up with that in the late 70s or early 80s, that they would have done more with it. There might be an extra bridge section or a key change or some kind of build near the end or something unexpected. But um, I think on this album, it was more of a victory lap. ABBA have nothing left to prove. So um, the song writing musically sometimes was a little less ambitious than on previous albums, in my opinion. Um, Okay, so the critics, they were a little bit mixed on it. Some people loved the song, some people didn't like it as much. Um, For example, uh, we had... Jem Aswad from Variety called it a swooning, swelling, majestic orchestral ballad with a Schubert lilt that's so stately it could almost be some European country's national anthem. Um, with the suitably, sta- suitably stately Ode to Freedom, Abba's fundamental charm has won you over, says Nick Levine of New Music Express. Um, yeah, so quite a few good reviews here. Uh, another example would be... Um, Barry Diffola from Sydney Morning Herald uh, he overall seemed to not have been a great fan of this album he says the bad news is that there's a bunch of utter schlock here and he would class Ode to Freedom as being among the utter schlock (laughs) I definitely disagree with that I think uh, most people do alright now so at number 4 on the list we have Just a Notion not to be confused with just an ocean, which it has been misheard as, but no, just an ocean. Interestingly, the last song we talked about, Ode to Freedom, some people have misheard that one as well. There was one person who said to the, who wasn't really only half listening to the song in the background, and he said to his wife, who's an ABBA fan, um, what, what about Agnetta? And she's like, well, what about Agnetta? And then he said, well, they have Ode to Frida. Why isn't there something for Agnesha? So he's mishearing it's Ode to Frida, uh, which is an easy mistake to make. Now, for Just an Ocean, this is that retro one. It has all of its 1978 loveliness. Like most ABBA fans, I can think of an, another unreleased song with a three-word title starting with Just that actually is a fan favourite. So I think the ones the fans were hoping for was Just Like That, but they got Just a Notion. Anyhow... This used to be a demo from 1978 that they included um, in a montage called ABBA Undeleted that showed some songs from recording sessions that had never been completed. And this one, Just a Notion, was included in that. So fans have been aware of this song for quite a number of years. But they decided, when ABBA were doing Voyage, they decided to revive one of the old demos and the one they chose was Just a Notion. Now it is very interesting because you get to compare and contrast because there's the old clip from 1978 there's a new clip from 2021 and you can tell the difference in styles and it's kind of an insight into the, how the entire album might have been produced differently um, had they be, had these songs been produced back in the late 70s so um, personally I would be more of a fan of the mix they did in 1978 I have to admit because I think it was more crisp. I think um, the influence of Michael B. Tretto is missed a little bit on this album, that um, they could have afforded in general to have turned up the higher end. The treble is a bit dulled on this album. So the mastering is not quite what I would have expected from ABBA. It's a little bit on the dull side and the mixing I think could be a little bit better. Like I prefer the mix on the 1978 version, to be honest, it's more, has a more organic kind of rock sound than what we got in the 2021 version. But it is a little burst of joy, and I agree with the critics that it's probably one of the, one of the better songs on the album. Now, um, on the bad side of things, some of the people who didn't like it were, some of the critics who didn't like it kind of said, accused of being a 70s reject. 
a rejected track, which isn't fair because um, it's a very good song and it does hold its own, as many of the other critics have attested to. Uh, so, Jem Aswad of Variety calls it the kind of 1950s sock hop pastiche that peppered their early albums. Um, ben Cardew of Pitchfork described it as being in the second tier of ABBA recordings. Um, whereas some of the others, like Darren Styles from Attitude, described it as the big sing-along number you'll be humming for days. Kieran McCaddy from The Line of Best Fit described it as one of the record's strongest tracks, a brilliantly catchy number. So there we go. Um, so some mixed reviews based on the fact that it was first um, first created in 1978 but never released until now so some people are holding that against them other people are just judging it on its merits and acknowledging what a catchy and well put together song it is which i think that's really the way to look at it okay so track number three was the first one that abba fans heard i still have faith in you the first single release from the album this song has grown on me personally at this initial september reveal i was underwhelmed by it because i think it owes too much of a debt to benny and bjorn's musical theater leanings um now the lyrics are pretty good because they serve as a love note to the fan base and that's an interesting touch i love that they've done that also on don't shut me down as well the other single that was released at the same time as i still have faith in you that also um has a double meaning where it's kind of like a, another love letter from the from abba to their fans asking them to still accept them after all this time has passed so i do appreciate that i think anyone who's an abba fan would appreciate those things about the lyrics however um I have a motto about music where I never like the lyrics to get in the way of a good melody. And mm, I think it has in this song a little bit. Um, however, the build into the epic we do have it in us section comes as a welcome burst of energy and it kind of saves the song from itself. So personally, I think it's a bit dreary, dreary and a bit rambling, but the epic bit where they say, we do have it in us, is um, it helps save the song and give it a good bit of contrast. So I think that's the kind of thing that Bumblebee and Ode to Freedom, Freedom are missing, is that kind of where they change gear and go to another level. Um, now, the critics are mixed on this. Uh, some people loved it. Alan Core from RTE describes it as a tender caress of a song that seems to call down the years to reaffirm the band's love for each other despite it all. Um, a veritable mission statement, says John Marr from Irish Independent. So exquisitely Abba, it's hard to notice the passion of time, says another critic. Um, uh, Barry Divilla from Sydney Morning Herald, who has been quite harsh on other songs, gave this one a 10 out of 10 and said the orchestration is as big as an ocean liner and the song is arranged as if it is a tentpole moment in a Broadway musical or the latest Disney animated extravaganza. Um, ben Ben Cardew on Pitchfork is a little more lukewarm about it and I agree with him wholeheartedly he describes it as two thirds of a brilliant song let down by the rather earthbound melody in the song's verse I 100% agree with that um, other people say it reflects how far these four have travelled emotionally a gorgeous soaring ballad yeah there's a lot of um, love for this song among the critics Nick Levine from New Music Express is less enthusiastic. He calls it the cheesier of the two lead singles. All right. So at number two on the list, we have track nine on the album. No doubt about it. This one is a classic energetic ABBA bop. After a worryingly unconventional banjo-led intro, it bursts into life, going straight to the chorus. A chorus that's not too dissimilar to um, one of their oldest songs, Santa Rosa. Um, but this song is better than that. Um, so along, this is one of the major highlights of Voyage, in my opinion, and as well in the critics' opinion. In common with Abba's best song, it's a well-put-together, complex production. Some interesting faux pas pizzicato synth work in the second verse sets it apart, as does the arpeggio harp work added to the pre-chorus section after the second verse that wasn't present the first time around. So ABBA like to do that. They like to build up instruments as the song progresses. 
Um, so yeah, it's it's an excellent little song, and many of the critics would have agreed with that. Now, Alan Core from RTE is an exception. He describes it as one of the weaker tracks, but he's he's one of the only ones who had that opinion. Um, Darren Styles from Attitude describes it as the sleeper hit of the album. Ben Cardew of Pitchfork it, it has a gushing review of this song where he describes it as one of the best pop melodies of the year. Nick Levine from New Music Express, a melodramatic banger that captures the queasy thrill of having a massive row with your partner. <laughs> Kieran McCaddy, Line of Best Fit, describes it as another album highlight. Um, Gloriously, it's still them, says Gem Aswad of Variety. So, uh, mostly good reviews for that track. Yeah, people are fans of that. Now, that brings us to number one. The best song on the album, according to the critics' consensus, with a 94% freshness rating, is track four, Don't Shut Me Down. So, this song managed to get top 10 in the UK charts when it was released as a single. Um, it was also number one in Sweden. In Ireland, it didn't quite go go top ten. It it it's, uh, stalled at number twelve, but that's still pretty good. All right, it did not take very long for this song to grow on me personally, and it has become, as far as I'm concerned, an instant ABBA classic. You have the quiet opening verse, then it explodes into life with a kind of dancing queen. He is your brother, kind of glissando on the piano. Um, it's by far the catchiest song on this album and many lines seem self-referential uh, so it seems like there's a double meaning here like saying I'm not the same this time around keep an open mind I'm now and then combined you have to assume this was deliberate on Bjorn's part very clever stuff anyway some of the reviews here let me see can I find the worst one the worst one of the prestigious reviews no, there's nothing. No. No, they're 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 in accord here. The the critics all think this is good. Um, Darren Stars Matt you describes it as a gold plated highlight that speaks to the mini musical sound that closed out Abbott the album. Um, John Marr from the Independent says it's set to a deliciously kooky Scandi disco beat. Um, Louise Bruton, Irish Times confirming their expertise in presenting sadness as happiness and that's a very good point it has that melancholy in it but still is quite upbeat as well um barry divola from the sydney morning herald a 10 out of 10 musically it minds the scandy disco they perfected with dancing queen lyrically it's a cousin to 1982's the day before you came uh, ben cardo of pitchfork fantastically arranged with hooks piled on top of hooks gently arranged range on a bed of unusual musical choices. Uh, Rob Sheffield, Rolling Stone, calls it the prize of the new tunes. Um, so yeah, there's there's a lot of gushing reviews here for that particular song. So there we go. So let's take a quick look at this album in the context of all their studio albums from the past and how it stacks up against it. So if you look here, you'll notice that I have made a spreadsheet of every ABBA album, all the songs that are on them in order, and they're color coded. Now let me just guide you through this color code. If it is yellow, yellow uh, stands for an way above average song, an absolute gold classic. A gold classic song that's one of the best songs ever written is yellow. Green means it's an exceptional song black would uh, denote a song that runs somewhere between average and good so average to good is black and then a, if a song is colored red it means it is below average okay so based on that you can see the album ring ring has three classic songs in it and four um excellent songs on it. Waterloo would have um, four classic songs, two excellent songs. So you can see that from the spread of albums. Um, a very few red songs, below average songs. Only one on Ring Ring, two on Waterloo. If you put Voyage into that, you'll notice that whereas it doesn't have any songs that are among the best songs ever written, 
none of those yellow songs. It does have three excellent songs and only one song on it that could be described as below average. So certainly, Voyage can hold its own. It definitely ranks higher than the self-titled album, this album here, ABBA. So that's where it fits in. Now, I think part of the reason why it doesn't quite hits, hit the musical heights of, for example, Arrival, Super Trooper, or The Visitors, um, is that ABBA have nothing left to prove. And while many of the songs in this album are very good songs, they didn't have to make, they didn't have to prove anything or push any boundaries because they've already proved everything they need to prove. But still, having said that, as a comeback album with nothing to prove, after 40 years, they did manage to outdo at least one of their previous albums as in terms of quality songs. So definitely they can hold their heads up high. So the last thing to have a look at is how does the critics consensus compare to the consensus of the ABBA fan community and also to our particular rank, YouTube Ireland's ranking of these songs. So let's have a quick look at that. So, okay, so what you can see there is that the critics consensus have Don't Shut Me Down number one, No Doubt About It number two, right down to as far as Bumblebee and Little Things at number nine and 10. That's close enough to the fan consensus. The fan consensus, as you can see, they agree that Little Things and Bumblebee are the two weakest tracks on the album. They also agree that Don't Shut Me Down is the strongest track on the album. Um, YouTube Ireland's rank, we would have I Can Be That Woman last, followed by Bumblebee, then Ode to Freedom, I Still Have Faith In You, Little Things at number six, number five, Just A Notion, Number four, When You Dance With Me. Number three, Keep An Eye On Dan. Number two, No Doubt About It. And number one, Don't Shut Me Down. So our rank would be in accord with the critics' consensus for what the best two tracks on the album are. Now you can see the differences here. They're highlighted in green and red. Uh, green denotes that this particular thing, like the fan consensus here, has Ode to Freedom second, but that's only fifth and eighth in the other two rankings. So green shows that they have a particular song ranked higher than the other two rankings. Red shows that a particular song is lower. Like for example, the fan consensus only has no doubt about it seventh, whereas YouTube Ireland's rank and the critics rank would have it second. Okay, so let's have a look at where I would consider these songs to rank. If you get all 139 of ABBA's uh, songs, and if you rank them from best to worst, where do the Voyage songs land? So let's have a look at my ranking of those, of the 139 ABBA songs. Where do the new songs land? Let's have a look. There you go, you can see Man in the Middle, their worst song down at the very end. So the first entry at number 116 on their list is I Can Be That Woman. Then up at 108, you have Bumblebee. Into the top 100 best ABBA songs, you have Ode to Freedom at number 94. Then I Still Have Faith in You, number 83. Little Things, number 79. Then all the way up to Just a Notion at number 61 on the list. Um, then we have When You Dance With Me, number 57. Keep an eye on Dan at number 54. And then the top two, we have no doubt about it coming in as a new entry at number 34 on the all-time ABBA Top 139 chart. And then you have at number 29 is Don't Shut Me Down. Interesting. So I hope you enjoyed our review of ABBA's new album Voyage and also our analysis of what the critics consensus is on that album. Of course, none of this really matters. The main thing that matters is whether you enjoyed Voyage and what your favorite songs on the album are. My hope is that Voyage provides you with many, many hours or 37 minutes of pleasure and that you find something on it that you love. If like me, you're gonna head over to the Avatar concerts in London at some point in the future, 
then I hope you have the time of your life. Just like the girl in Dancing Queen did. All that's left for me to say is... Slon. Slon.